So yesterday we had this really awesome field trip. We went down to Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island, and we went to the John Connor Brown Library, which was immensely amazing. Keep in mind that everything you're going to see today is original. These aren't copies of copies. I think the earliest one we'll see today is from 1493, which is actually one of the first printed announcements of Columbus's discovery. Uh, and these guys have the original copy. You'll see a lot of the original documents that a number of you have already been working on. What we do here is we collect European expansion to North and South America, Western Hemisphere, from 1492 to the end of the colonial period. some of these places. Uh, Port Antonio is on the north coast of Jamaica, see if you can find it uh, on the, the map view here. Take a look at the land use and then also compare why is Jamaica, why is the land use development around Jamaica different on Barbados and why that might be reminiscent of that story of the island geography and how that sort of directed what kind of agriculture could develop and where it can develop on each island. I was able to look at my document which was the slave ship book. This image just was appeared so often, I'm sure, yeah, recycled and, and parts of it, story. and other parts of it, and then it was smaller, and it was larger. To look at it in its context, it was pretty moving because I was able to actually get close and actually look at the artistry and what went into making this document. Having the students conduct a, a very significant research paper focusing on this uh, historical document, and then, then have an opportunity to actually go and see these original documents is something that really sets this program apart. I really enjoyed getting a chance to look at all those old maps and charts. I think that was my favorite part of it. It seems like there's an amazing amount of artistry and love that went into making these things that we don't really have anymore. You look at a modern chart and it's, you know, it's really, it's easy to use, it's practical. These charts with all their various political and social influences are really works of art. It really brings to life the document that you're looking at. This concept of hearing about a man sailing to a new world is kind of hard to connect to, but if you can see and hold the book that he has personally written, it gives you a chance to be there yourself. So has anybody used watercolor? Probably everybody's used it some way, right? When Europeans arrived to the Caribbean, some of the first ways they, they documented uh, their experiences, the things that they saw, were obviously in written journals and log books, but then they were also illustrating uh, these accounts. And we get our students sort of going through that process when they come to the Cape. We get them out viewing the environment and doing some of this own sort of written description as well as illustrating. We've been uh, fortunate enough to have guest uh, science natural historian illustrators come and, and join the program uh, and help the students go through that process of sort of relearning how to draw. No. Directions to Racing Beach, where's that? That's oh, here? right down that way and that's where I've been swimming a lot. Good, so, so you need to add personal stuff in here. You could either make a little legend here, you know, saying how distance, you could put a distance scale bar. Okay. The art classes have been pretty fun. I won't say they've been calming, <laughs> um, because I think everyone who comes on this trip brings their own take on life, and you're going to get a lot of strong science kids who, when you introduce them to this art class, are going to get frustrated just because they've never had to work with art before. But it is an interdisciplinary program, so I think it's allowed us to grow as individuals having to, to, to work with this art. It's actually my favorite part of, of the program, thus far anyway, has been the fact that all these different people from all these different disciplines that their colleges have kind of have been pulled together and we're all talking about the same subject matter, but we're all approaching it from different angles. We bring this knowledge together into this, this synthesis that you don't really find it in a normal program. I have never sailed. The Kramer was here in Woods Hole when I was here over the summer, and I got on the ship and walked around, but I have never left the dock. <laughs> the closest I've come was taking the ferry to Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> I've sailed a little bit. Um, I'm a little nervous. I really hope I don't get seasick. Mostly I'm just excited. It's like the more and more we learn about the Caribbean and being on the boat, the more and more I can't wait to go there. In high school, a friend of mine recommended the Science at Sea high school program here. So I did that and I loved it. And I decided pretty much right then that I wanted to come back. It's such a different kind of life. You, you lose track of what day it is, you lose track of what time it is. It stops mattering because you're on this 24-hour watch schedule. 
I guess most of the things we care about here on land, you know, our, our little day-to-day -day problems kind of go away and it's all, it all gets submerged in the rhythm of making the ship run.